I'm Zaina Kyat. I lead the Futures team for a 110-year-old health organization called SE Health. And, uh, you know, my job is to help pivot an organization whose business model uh, no longer serves. Uh, and that's really what healthcare is going through. We've had a business model for 150 years that hasn't changed, and it's just no longer working. And so I got invited to uh, a conference of kind of leading health organizations across uh, North America and the U.K., to lead a three-hour kind of session on how what's the role of the board of directors in pivoting uh, an entire organization. And these were for health organizations, but I think the lessons I brought to this uh, are the same, you know, no matter what organization, given the amount of change everybody goes through. And so I wrote up about it in a, in a blog afterwards. You're welcome to read it. Um, in this month's Rotman magazine, I don't talk about pivot. I just talk about the future of healthcare and where it's going. But I'm going to kind of have a little bit of fun with you uh, and share this short talk I gave uh, as part of this conference. The format was Pecha Kucha. You guys probably know that format. It came from Japan to force people to be succinct when they give presentations. So Pecha Kuchas are 20 seconds times 20 slides. So you're done in six minutes. So the fact that I have 12 minutes is like a luxury. So, so here we go. So, you know, so reminder of what a pivot is, and just like the word strategy, I'm sure everyone has their own definition. The working definition I'm using is, you know, you're pivoting an organization or a department. Uh, if you're, you know, significantly changing one or more elements of your business model, um, but your, your strategy is still the same. And reminder of what's a business model, I just love to use Clay Christensen from Harvard's uh, framework, which is here on the right. So if one or more of those elements of your business model, how you're creating value and organizing your resources to do so, now you're in a pivot mode. And, you know, the challenge for any 21st century organization, especially in healthcare, but everywhere, is how do you get wired to do that kind of consistently given business models you just are not lasting as long as they used to? And how do you bring it into your DNA? Well, uh, I'm a biologist. And, you know, we can take some inspiration from these little creatures called bacteria, who uh, it is in their DNA to pivot. So you might know that, you know, the whole reason for existence, so there's the strategy of a bacteria, is to find food and eat it. And so they've got two ways they can, you know, search. One is just to kind of use their tail to fling them across your cells to find stuff. Uh, but if they sense there's some micronutrients, they actually switch and pivot to tumbling and flipping around, and they switch their whole way to get food. And so, you know, that's kind of how we've been able to be alive as a species. So the question is, you know, who else has this capability to pivot in their DNA? And that's where startups come in. So, um, you know, I don't have to tell you which of the pictures on this slide is a startup. Uh, you know, the, the, the challenge for large, complex organizations is we've kind of built pivot out of our whole business, our operating model, because we're, you know, what we are as complex organizations is uh, a, a permanent organization that's designed to uh, very finely execute a repeatable and scalable business model. Well, a startup on the right is exactly the opposite. They're not a permanent organization. They're a temporary organization, and they're searching, just like that bacteria, for a repeatable and sustainable business model. And they do that by running experiments based on a, a problem they're seeing with a customer, uh, test it, and then if their experiments fail, they pivot. And I think the data now shows the average startup that ultimately gets to scale up, uh, which is you know one in, I don't know, 90 or 100 startups make it, they pivot on average six times. I mean, most of you might work for a complex organization that's actually never been through a pivot, right? So this is kind of the, the difference in velocity and capability. So, you know, what is it about uh, these creatures and can larger complex organizations learn from them? Um, uh, so let's look at, we're going to do that by looking at a few startups that you might all know and just let's see, what did they do? How did they pivot and, and what can we learn? So I've kind of looked at a bunch of historical pivots, and this is not scientific at all, but I started to map a few patterns of types of pivots that they've done. And you can see where, you know, some pivots such as the, you know, number one and two are purely pivoting on one element of the business model, like the actual offering to the customer, the value prop. Others are pivoting on two or more, like, uh, like at the top there, the problem solution pivot. So 
so let's uh, let's have a little bit of fun and go through some of these. So you guys might recognize the fellow on the left here, Peter Thiel. Um, you might know or remember that he started in business by developing uh, encryption for phones and handheld devices. And he had a company, a security software company called Fieldlink. Uh, but Fieldlink didn't own any applications. So they actually pivoted the whole platform in the era of the Palm Pilot. Uh, and then they created uh, a new company called Confinity to allow you know me to send an IOU to you through our Palm Pilot. Palm Pilot was the device of the day in the kind of late 90s. And then after more than a year of getting nowhere really fast, uh, their next pivot was to move cash onto mobile phones. And that's what became PayPal. And that's when Elon Musk came on the scene. And as you know, they got acquired by eBay in 2002. Uh, and then really, uh, PayPal even gained more traction than before. Uh, and then uh, eBay established PayPal as its own company. So that's really a customer problem um, pivot because you're using the same product, but you're solving a different problem for a different customer segment. A similar customer problem pivot, uh, you might recall, was this little company that used to be called TuneIn and Hookup. And this was a site that allowed single people to upload a video of themselves and talk about what they wanted in a partner. And, uh, but very few people took advantage of this value prop. So the founders pivoted <laughs> and they let people upload any video of any kind onto this thing called YouTube. And then they, they kind of pivoted the logo again to make it a little bit fresher and cleaner. Um, and, and similarly, there was another company called Tote. Many of you might not even remember this. Um, but uh, Tote, you know, was a site that allowed people to shop at their favorite stores and get a notification when things go on sale. And so they thought they're going to transform every single cell phone uh, into a clothing retail outlet, you know, with the Tote app. Um, but they had they discovered a few things, right? First of all, people weren't at the time using mobile apps for shopping. It was they were just too early. Um, and then Apple's App Store at the time wasn't ready to support businesses that were built on the platform because it was just too slow. Too slow. Uh, and then finally, they, you know, their big customer insight was that the users of Tote much better preferred to build kind of collections of their favorite things and share them with their friends. And so that became Pinterest. Uh, and now they're at, you know, 70 million users and 30 billion pins. Okay, so, so now the product feature pivot. So some of you, you know, may remember this platform called The Point. And The Point uh, was uh, set up to, as a social media platform to get people to kind of get together and solve causes that were important to them. Um, and, but it went nowhere, like fast. And so, you know, they did realize one group of people got together and they decided the cause that they wanted to advance was a way to save money. And so, you know, they were able to kind of collectively bargain with groups of 20 or more people to get the same product and get a group discount. And then that became Groupon. And they got rid of every other feature on the platform and rebranded it. And now there's something like 650,000 merchants on this platform. So that was a product feature pivot, you know, which is really um, uh, a, a zoom in kind of pivot. Another one is, that's another kind of product feature pivot where they've kind of got rid of features and went in on the one that seemed to work is this old company called Bourbon. And they were trying to copy uh, Foursquare, which was like a location-based social network. They had gaming, photo uploads, um, kind of a combo gaming and photo app. Um, it didn't really work. The location part people didn't care for. What they really liked was being able to socially share photos. And, you know, the feature they had before that they thought mattered to users was real-time photo sharing, uh, but turned out they didn't need real-time. And that's kind of what became Instagram in 2010. And now they've got, you know, many hundreds of millions of active users. And as you know, they were acquired by Facebook. So they really zoomed in and pivoted out uh, all the stuff they didn't need. Another pretty popular example is the market segment pivot. So this is where you take your existing product and you use it to solve a similar problem, but for a very different set of customers. Um, so you might remember that there was um, an attempt to you know, create a, a camera platform. Android was a camera platform 
where uh, you'd use cloud to store your photos uh, online. And then smart cameras could connect on this Android platform to PCs to move your photos around um, uh, to this Android data center. Uh, quickly, they realized that, you know, the smart camera market was not big enough for Android. Uh, and, uh, and so they pivoted to kind of smartphones and all sorts of data, not just cameras. And that's kind of how we have Android as it is today, which I think is now over 70% market share in the U.S. last year. Another really fun pivot that you might not be aware of because um, you're used to these household names, uh, that was another kind of market segment pivot. pivot. So, you know, Uber um, started actually, uh, which is the bottom one there, when there was like a big oversupply of those black limousines waiting at parking lots or uh, for their next scheduled customer. And so they did a kind of on demand for a black limo. Um, so they could kind of um, use that capacity, that asset really well. Um, and uh, that ended up getting the attention of cab drivers as well, and then private drivers. And so they updated their operations to uh, non-commercial drivers with their own private vehicles. At the exact same time, actually, this com Lyft came before Uber, um, but it used to be called Zimride. And Zimride was around to help students to carpool between cities, like to go home for Thanksgiving. Um, and so kind of long haul ride sharing was Zimride. And, uh, and then, you know, nobody had ever tested a market for going with a stranger in their car. Uh, and so that's how they pivoted to Lyft and then Uber just basically fast copied and now we've got these two players in the market. Okay, last couple examples. So Ludacorp, um, you know, this is the company that used to be Flickr. So Ludacorp started as this kind of fun, light, online video game, very whimsical. They had real-time photo sharing. And then, you know, they kind of pivoted to be less about real-time, less about the games, and that pretty much uh, everything focused on kind of Flickr uh, and photo sharing. And, you know, as you know, they got acquired by Yahoo. Okay, different type of pivot is the major competitor pivot. So this is where, you know, a major new player or competitor comes into your space. You can either charge ahead blindly or pivot uh, to get your own differentiation and stay alive. So in 2005, there was a platform called Odeo, and this was a way to discover uh, and subscribe to podcasts. Uh, iTunes was rising with the podcasting niche, and so this company would have went away. And so they actually went to all their employees and said, you know, pitch a new idea. Uh, and that's when the future founder, Jack Dorsey, you know, suggested microblogging. And then Twitter was born. Um, uh, other pivots, uh, problem pivot. So this is where you have a company to solve one problem, and then you take the same resource to solve a different problem. Tiny Spec uh, was a uh, kind of a game online, very nonviolent, but they couldn't scale it. They had money left over from their VC because the founder was the same guy who founded Flickr. And their, the kind of venture capital investor trusted this team who knew how to pivot. And, uh, you know, they had built a way for their staff that were all over the world to communicate using a platform called Slack. And then they've, as you know, scaled that globally. And it's now a unicorn. Uh, Netflix, you know, Netflix is itself all the time. Uh, you know, they, they you know, were the first to change a, a revenue model from one-time product sales to subscription in the kind of video and movie game. And then they just continue to pivot uh, and get ahead of customers in terms of their needs. And then only to say pivoting isn't just for high-tech companies. I hear this all the time in healthcare, which is a very labor-intensive. You know, Starbucks started out by selling espresso machines, and that didn't work, and they pivoted. Uh, Carol Leha started by selling, you know, sun products and bathing suits and pivoted to being kind of a, a bamboo sustainable company. So both of these created a completely new market that didn't exist by pivoting off their core assets. Um, so look, you know, a lot of companies are now trying to do this and a lot of consultant firms like Accenture try to help them. They've written books like how to do a wise pivot. Uh, they realize very few large incumbents know how to do this. Something like 6% are what they call rotation masters, but it can be done. I mean, you know, if you look at the history of a company like Nokia that started in the wood pulp business and, you know, is now in digital health and just pivoted out of digital health this year. Uh, Nintendo started by making playing cards, went through multiple industries, you know, and is now a top gaming company. So this isn't just for startups. And so, 
that, that kind of sums it up. Um, and I guess the one thing I'll say is pivoting, you know, the clear kind of common thread is for all these companies, there was no grand plan. They listened to their customers. They had some guts and they went for it and they were supported by, you know, their, their venture backers or whoever. And, and that would be what I encourage you to do uh, as you pursue pivots. Thank you very much.